we're at in America right now, where Roger Stone can't even have a fair press conference without getting shouted down, and that's why we had to do it here today and spend thousands of dollars to host you, and some of you think that you can still call the shots. No wonder why President Trump calls you fake news and the enemy of the American people. So, really a sad display from y'all. Now, Roger Stone has been silenced on social media. Roger Stone's platform at Infowars.com has also been silenced. So this man is not even allowed to defend his own honor because they are ripping his voice away from him. And in case you can't tell, Roger and I are probably looking pretty tired today. Because ever since what I view as the illegal FBI raid on Roger Stone's house, he has received numerous death threats, numerous media inquiries, and it's almost been impossible for us to sleep through this endeavor. Now, anybody who saw the FBI raid on Roger Stone's house knows that it was clear to me, beyond a reasonable doubt, that somehow CNN got a leak. And now you have congressmen calling for an investigation into that. You've also seen a lot of violence against Trump supporters and a lot of threats, as I said, against Roger Stone. So now we have to walk around with increased security. In fact, there are a lot of people doubting a story that I was sexually harassed in Washington, D.C. by a Women's March protester marching against sexual harassment, sexually harassed me. People are doubting that story, saying it's fake news. Well, I'm going to go ahead and give out this individual's name, and I'm begging, unlike people on the left, unlike what you did to the Covington Catholic High School boys, and unlike what you've done to Roger Stone, I hope that you would not dox this woman, and you would leave her alone. But Isabel O'Shaughnessy was arrested for sexually assaulting me. Okay? Also yesterday, I had a man try to rub spit in my eye. And this is all thanks to the lies in the mainstream media. And now they're trying to destroy an innocent man, Roger Stone. And I am just, I am just at, in a disbelief at how Roger has been able to keep his composure and maintain his energy throughout all of this. Now I hope that he gets fair treatment here today, unlike what he has received this entire week. And unlike what he has received since this political witch hunt has began against him. Now, again, all of you came out here for one reason. You want the Roger Stone story. But how many of you actually care about an innocent man getting out of the grips of a rogue prosecutor? I'm wondering if any of you do. You are more obsessed with getting your shot than getting the truth out about Roger Stone at a press conference that you didn't pay a dime to be at, and you're begging for Roger to give you any quote all day long. So I just ask you, do you care? that an innocent man is being politically persecuted right now? Or do you just care about your own ratings? Is that why you lie about President Trump? Is that why you lie about Trump supporters? Is that why you lie about Roger Stone? So Roger's gonna step up here and he is going to provide an opening statement and then we are going to take questions. But I know that some of you had to reach out to your corporate overlords and ask if you're even going to be allowed to air this press conference because there's an InfoWars mic flag sitting on the podium. Well, I hope that triggers you. And I hope that you realize that in media, you should be standing up for free speech. And in America, you should be standing up for justice, not a political persecution against an innocent man where they're trying to destroy his life and he has to deal with death threats every day. So without further ado, here is Roger Stone. Thank you, uh, Owen. First of all, uh, as a veteran of 50 years in, in American politics, I understand you cannot brand every member of the media with the same brush. And therefore, uh, there are honest reporters in this room. There are capable, honest reporters in this room who are just trying to do their job and get their, the facts. And there are others who do not meet that criteria. So let's be clear, um, I do not regard the press or the media as the enemy. I regard some members of the press and the media as the enemy. 
Uh, that said, I wanted the opportunity to make a statement outside the courthouse the other day that was obviously physically impossible given uh, the pushing, the shoving, the shouting, the spitting. I felt kind of like Vice President Richard Nixon in Caracas in 1958. Uh, I want to say, to begin with, that as I think most of you know, I have pled not guilty to the charges against me. I stress that these are all after-the-fact process crimes, and I am not accused of a Russian collusion. I am not accused of collaboration with WikiLeaks. I am not accused of conspiracy. There is no evidence or accusation that I knew in advance about the source or content of the WikiLeaks materials, be that allegedly hacked material or allegedly stolen material. Uh, the allegation that I was less than truthful to the House Intelligence Committee to cover up what underlying crime. There is no underlying crime, and therefore any honest mistake I made in memory would be both uh, immaterial uh, and lacking intent. I do intend to vigorously contest these charges. I will mount as vigorous offense a, a, a defense as I can. Uh, I am heartened that Senator Graham and also some Republican members of the House are looking into the manner in which I was arrested. I think as most of you know, uh, uh, at 5.50 a.m., 29 federal agents, FBI agents, both men and women, uh, arrived in my home wearing uh, full SWAT gear, uh, night vision goggles, brandishing assault weapons, sidearms, uh, and, some, and they had a device that is generally used for battering down a door when somebody refuses to open it. Um, there were 17 vehicles in the front yard, uh, two of them armored. There was a helicopter overhead. I live on a canal. There were two amphibious units uh, in the water. My house was completely surrounded by armed agents covering every exit. Uh, I have no prior criminal record. I'm accused of nonviolent process crimes. I do not own a gun. There was no guns in the house. I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment, but I do not own a firearm. I do not own uh, a uh, valid passport, uh, with the caveat that it may have expired within the last three days. I don't know because it was seized by the FBI. Uh, I was not read my Miranda rights. Uh, I was uh, brought out of the house. I was handcuffed. Uh, I was standing in the street wearing a Roger Stone did nothing wrong t-shirt. That's what I slept in. You can get those at 1776.shop. Uh, the proceeds go to my legal defense fund. Uh, wearing a pair of cut off sweatpants, uh, no shoes. My wife, uh, who is uh, hearing impaired, was uh, rousted from the house. She was made to stand next to me wearing a nightgown and uh, barefooted. The, uh, the agents uh, were professional and they were courteous once I was in custody. I have no complaint about their conduct, but the special counsel's office was well aware of the fact that I was represented. They knew the name and phone number for my lawyers and it remains an absolute fact that my attorneys learned that I had been arrested from CNN before they had been contacted by the government. Uh, I'm heartened by the fact that uh, Senator Graham and these House Republicans will get to the bottom uh, of why this uh, show of force was necessary. If I was considered dangerous, then why was the CNN camera crew allowed within 25 feet of my front door? The, the street, which is a one-way street, was sealed off, and nobody else, including people living on the street, were allowed to enter. So if CNN was there before the raid began, why were they allowed to stay in view of the fact that I was obviously considered dangerous? Uh, I am uh, uh, very tired, as you can see, uh, but I will take your questions. The point, I guess, that bothers me the most before we get there is that FBI Director Comey lied under oath to the Congress. J. 
John Brennan, uh, the CIA director, lied both about the Steele dossier and the investigation and the surveillance of a Senate committee looking into illegal torture before the Congress. Mr. McCabe, the, the uh, associate director or assistant director of the FBI, lied under oath to Congress. Uh, Dr. Uh, General Clapper lied about the existence of a metadata collection program on Americans. These are consequential lies. These are lies that are material. And then, of course, Hillary Clinton not only lied, but she also destroyed evidence. And she lied about whether or not uh, she had received or sent classified information, a national security breach. But there is no interest by the special counsel uh, in any of these acts of perjury. Additionally, uh, the New York Times reported on January 20th, 2017, that I was among uh, three uh, advisors to Donald J. Trump who was under surveillance the time has, Times has declined to retract that story. They stand by that story. I believe that story could be accurate. I believe that there are more than one FISA warrant to be uh, surveilled under the FISA law. One must be actively engaged in espionage for a foreign power against the United States of America. I do not meet that criteria. If I was under surveillance in a non-FISA warrant, what would be the probable cause? I'm hoping that in this uh, trial, in discovery, we can get to the bottom of those questions. But I, you note know that even though I forgot uh, before the committee that I had been approached by a man named Henry Greenberg, who was a ethnic, ethnic Russian, uh, and who offered to sell me information about Hillary Clinton, a, uh, an offer that I flatly refused, as accurately reported by the Washington Post, there's been no uh, there's been no allegation regarding Mr. Greenberg. That's because Mr. Greenberg is an FBI informant. That's because Mr. Greenberg is in the country, was in the country, has been in the country under an FBI informant's warrant. Why was an FBI informant approaching me in May of 2016, two months prior to the FBI saying they had opened their investigation? into allegations of, of the president's campaign colluding with the Russians. These are questions that we hope to get to the bottom of. Uh, I am uh, grateful to InfoWars for sponsoring this because in all honesty, I lack the personal resources to uh, pay for this room, to pay for this microphone, Mr. Breen, to uh, pay for any of, of this, and therefore I'm grateful to my colleagues at InfoWars for making this room available. I'm grateful to all of you for showing up. Um, I have been fighting a war of censorship. I have a syndicated radio show with Owen Floyer, my colleague, every day at 5 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Central, called The War Room. Uh, we are censored across multiple social media platforms. You don't have to agree with us, you have to agree with Alex Jones, you have to agree with anything we say to agree with our right to express ourselves. It's called the First Amendment. Uh, it is. Uh, it has also been very difficult given the uh, censorship and the shadow banning on Facebook for me to sell my books. I'm the New York Times best-selling author. Uh, I have written five books, soon to be six, uh, and I have succeeded in making those books uh, uh, successful and bestsellers through the use of the extraordinarily effective targeting capability of Facebook, which is now denied me because any paid promotion that I propose is rejected for inappropriate content, even if the subject of the book is how a gentleman should dress. Uh, I will be happy uh, to take your questions now. Let me say lastly, uh, as I must, those who wish to help me, can go to stonedefensefund.com. Thousands of Americans have. Uh, the special counsel has the unlimited resources of the American taxpayers, has a platoon of Ivy League lawyers. I'm very happy with my legal representation, uh, but they need to get paid. Lawyers are not inexpensive in America. I'm happy to take a few well, questions now. I talked to Chris Christie this morning. Yes. So, yeah. yeah, I spoke to 
Chris Christie this morning about the details of the indictment. And yes. As you know, the former prosecutor, former yes. Republican, and a Trump supporter. Yes. So pretty knowledgeable on this and pretty fair, I would think. He suggests the liability. I asked him, what's, what's, what did he think was the strongest liability in the indictment? And he said, on the issue of perjury, which you said, you either have a faulty memory or it's immaterial. He said, maybe that's true. But he said, the problem where he really sees it is on the witness tampering. Because even if you were joking, if the witness perceives it as intimidation, that's a problem. Uh, but the witness also intimidated me. The witness, first of all, perjured himself before the grand jury about being the source of the content uh, in the October release date of the WikiLeaks material. When I released over 30 pages of text messages proving that, very, very few media outlets reported that. They all reported his denials. MSNBC reported them almost in a serial nature, but nobody reported, virtually nobody reported uh, my uh, production of proof. Uh, secondarily, uh, the same man threatened to put a bullet in the head of one of the other exculpatory witnesses before Mr. Mueller's probe that was reported by the Daily Caller. Additionally, he threatened to have a woman falsely accuse me of sexual assault. So, he hasn't been, uh, he hasn't been indicted for perjury. He hasn't been indicted for witness intimidation or witness tampering. Uh, I also would suggest that any attorney uh, who makes pronunciations about this indictment without reading all four and a half hours of my testimony to see the questions in context uh, or to see the emails and text messages surrounding those that are highlighted by the government doesn't really understand the situation. And it would be irresponsible to draw conclusions. I'm represented by Bruce Rogow. Uh, Grant Smith, uh, Robert Buschel, and Tara Campion. Uh, they are excellent, excellent attorneys. Mr. Rogow has argued before the U.S. Supreme Court on 11 occasions. He is a noted First Amendment civil and criminal attorney. He believes that this uh, indictment is flawed. Roger, Roger, you, yes. you actually said you won't bear false witness against the president. Does that mean that you are ruling out cooperating with Robert Mueller? Uh, this is a question that I will have to refer to my lawyers ultimately. All I can tell you today is I will tell the truth about any matter that I have knowledge of. I don't possess any uh, knowledge of any wrongdoing by the President of the United States, including Russian collusion. So when I first said I won't testify against the President, uh, some of you said, aha, you see it's a cover-up. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I will not make up stories. I will not bear false witness. I will not say things that are not true. I will tell the truth. Have you talked to the president since the race? I have not. You? He, you have not talked to him? I have not. Okay, also the special counsel's latest filing, it says the evidence, evidence against you is voluminous and complex. Does that scare you at all? My attorneys have agreed to that. Um, it is so voluminous and complex that a speedy trial is literally impossible. So we stipulated to that in, in the hearing before the magistrate of, and both parties agreed to that. Do you think the hack of the DNC was a good thing for America? I think the hack of the DNC is an accusation that is unproven in any court of law in the United States. <laughs> it, is an, it is an assertion, uh, but there is substantial forensic evidence that may never have been hacked at all. So I understand the credibility of those making that charge, but it is unproven in court. What do you think of this Alicia Powell and excluded media? So the basis of the premise, pro, the Russia probe, what the dossier says is that Donald Trump colluded with Russia to hack the DNC server. That's never been proved by the FBI. Or, or yeah, anyone in else. fact, Donna Brazil said that the DNC destroyed the server, hired a private cybersecurity firm, crowd strike to give the FBI a uh, uh, record of what was on the server, and that's the basis of the probe. Do you think that the acting attorney general should be looking into why the DNC destroyed its server, which is like I said, the basis of this whole Russia investigation? Well, we don't know whether they, whether they have destroyed their server. We do know I'm being sued by the Democratic National Committee, and my attorneys in that action have sent a spoilation letter demanding that the server be uh, maintained and preserved so that it can be inspected, and we can get to the bottom of the question as to whether the DNC was ever hacked at all by anyone. Maybe you should be standing up here with me. Yes. Roger, um, you well know that any number of defense attorneys would caution their clients against speaking in a situation like this. By the time 
your trial uh, happens months, perhaps even years from now, circumstances will have changed. You may uh, come to regret some things you're now saying. You may come to regret some of the associations such as info work that you now have. What kind of advice are you getting from your attorneys about this? Why are you speaking like this? Well, first of all, if you've read my book, Stone's Rules, which I highly commend, uh, I believe that in the uh, current atmosphere, when one is accused of wrongdoing and one has no response, either is not available or doesn't comment, there is a presumption of guilt that perhaps is unfair but very real. Um, I know what I did. I know what I didn't do. I know the facts of the case. I don't think I said anything today that I will regret. Um, and I, it will be obviously said with greater documentation in court in due time. As far as InfoWars is concerned, it's a media outlet. It's a network. I don't subscribe to everything Alex Jones says. Alex Jones doesn't subscribe to everything that I say. I'm probably a bit more libertarian than he is. We have many talented people there, but it is a perfectly reputable platform. Uh, I'm responsible for the things that I say. Uh, I agree with Alex Jones on a number of things. I'm a nationalist, he's a nationalist. We believe in American sovereignty. We believe in American exceptionalism. Uh, I'm grateful to them for, uh, for hosting this because otherwise, I have no reasonable forum in which I can answer your questions. My cell phone, my, uh, my cell phone is the only electronic device that I still have, which was restored to me by the FBI. I'm 400 messages behind from reporters wanting to ask me questions. So this was the most efficient way to do so. Roger, if you take yourself out of the equation uh, and you just look at the broad scope of this, how do you explain the fact that Manafort, Flynn, Cohen, Hop, 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 all have been found guilty of lying and all about one issue, which is Russia. Uh, I'm not sure I agree with that with that formulation. Uh, that they, they were accused of that. I'm not any of them. I can only speak to my own case, and I am not guilty. Roger, are you ready tomorrow for Judge Jackson to begin the gag order? Um, that's certainly a possibility. Um, we'll deal with that when it comes. I would point out that I make a living writing speaking about politics. I would hope that the court would take that into consideration. Obviously, um, the government has not made a motion for that as of today, that we're aware of. It would require a hearing, as I understand it. Obviously, I will adhere to any ruling of the court uh, if they should do that. Um, on the other hand, I would also have the right, as I understand it, to appeal. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, it looks like, it, uh, looks like yeah. investigators still want to talk to are you prepared for a, the potential of a superseding indictment? Um, I'm not aware of any information Mr. Miller has that would be detrimental to me. I've not spoken to Mr. Miller since the time that he was subpoenaed. Uh, Mr. Miller did not work for me in 2015 or 2016. He did attend the Republican National Convention. I looked around, I didn't see any Russians. You mentioned a recent interview with Roger Jerome Corsi. Do you think he's going to be indicted? Uh, I couldn't speculate. Expanding on Corsi, recently you, uh, you told me that you were uh, considering a lawsuit against Corsi for defamation in light of him uh, continuing to uh, say things that you would say are, are false. Actually, uh, I never said I was looking at a lawsuit uh, in defamation. I was looking at the possibility of a lawsuit where you could get a declaration uh, that a statement is true or false that is allowed under our law. I think perhaps events have moved beyond that. I'm not going to get down in the gutter with Mr. Corsi. I have already said the number of things that he said are untrue. I believe that that will get proved uh, at trial when the appropriate time comes. Yes. Yes, uh, Mr. Stone, aside from your house being violated, your reputation's been violated. Uh, you made a comment about <coughs> advocating for the party of Marcus Garvey and some of the mainstream media has almost Yeah, th this is one of the things that is uh, hurtful because uh, we, I think people tend to put you in, in a box because I'm a, a Republican. But let me make this point. I have been an advocate for drug law reform for 25 years. I have been a, an opponent uh, and critic of the 1994 crime bill in which poor people and African Americans are subject to much harsher mandatory sentences for the possession of rock cocaine than wealthy white people who are in possession of 
uh, powder and cocaine. President Trump has just fixed that problem uh, in the more recent sentencing reform bill. Secondarily, uh, it, I know that this is not a popular view, but it's one that I must say. I worked for Richard Nixon. It is Richard Nixon who desegregated the public schools, not Lyndon Johnson, not John F. Kennedy. It is Richard Nixon who gave us affirmative action. I'm one of the few conservatives who've written and spoken in favor of affirmative action. I think it was necessary. Uh, it was Richard Nixon who quadrupled law enforcement for civil rights law enforcement. It was Richard Nixon who quadrupled, pardon me, increased ninefold funding for black colleges. So, uh, I, and I have long been uh, very interested in the posthumous pardon for Marcus Garvey, someone that I have written, uh, read extensively about, someone who is actually one of my political heroes. I believe he was unfairly railroaded by the FBI. So when I was asked, have I asked the president for a pardon? The answer is no. Have I discussed it with anyone who works for the president? The answer is no. The only person I have ever written to the president advocating a pardon for is Marcus Garvey. You said that the Russian probe is a speeding bullet headed towards Donald Trump's head. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, I, I believe the purpose of this probe is to undo the results of the 2016 election. I think it is a partisan uh, by nature of the fact that they showed no interest in the uh, Russian collusion by Hillary Clinton. The, uh, the acceptance, as reported by the New York Times, of $145 million from the Russian-owned energy company at a time when control of 20% of our energy reserves were on the table for a shift of control to the Russian state. Uh, that, I think that's a, a, maybe the most, uh, the largest treasonous financial crime in American history. Um, the illegal use of FISA warrants and surveillance which is uh, an abuse of power using the authority and capability of the state, which dwarfs what happened in Watergate as a constitutional crisis. Uh, the, uh, the illegitimate use of the FBI to infiltrate the Trump campaign. There's no interest in any of these issues. All we keep talking about is non-existent Russian collusion. There's a substantial difference, in my opinion, between Russian collusion, which we have found no evidence of, that would be conspiracy, coordination with the Trump campaign, and Russian meddling, which appeared to me to be ham-handed, underfunded, incompetently done, and was at various times pro-Hillary, anti-Hillary, pro-Bernie, anti-Bernie, pro-Trump, anti-Trump, seeking just to sow the seeds of discontent among Americans. Uh, Roger, Alex Jones would like you to address what the president should do in response to the Vogue special counsel and also talk about the Um, uh, what, uh, what, what Owen uh, speaks to is the fact that um, the president, in my opinion, should appoint a special counsel to uh, investigate the, uh, the illicit use of FISA warrants uh, and the illicit uh, 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 infiltration of his campaign by the FBI. He should direct his attorney general, either the acting attorney general or his new attorney general, to do that, he has that authority. I also think he should declassify the documents surrounding the FISA warrants and find out whether there are additional FISA warrants as I believe they are. Uh, and it is well known uh, that Mr. Rosenstein was the US attorney who was aware of bribes by the Russian energy company but approved the Uranium One deal uh, anyway. And Mr. Mueller was the man who <coughs> took the uranium samples to Stockholm for inspection uh, by the Russians as a condition of closing the deal. I think these are legitimate issues that should be investigated by the Justice Department. What should the President do about the war on the media? Well, the, the, in my opinion, he should direct the um, Justice Department to enact antitrust action to stop the racketeering of the big tech companies that would uh, censor some of us but not others. Uh, when I see uh, Jerry Nadler sit in the Google hearing for the House Judiciary Committee and say censorship of conservatives by Google is a, is a conspiracy theory, that's not true. We have internal memos, we have internal videos from Google, we have, we have extensive proof that that is a willful strategy by those companies to believe that everybody banned InfoWars on the same day, but they never spoke to each other. 
which would be collusion, uh, is, uh, is just not credible. I think Mr. Cook should be under oath. I saw Mr. Pai under oath. Uh, he perjured himself again and again and again. China? Where's China? I don't even know. I couldn't even find China on a map. We're not doing business in China. That's a lie. Or the Google uh, app does not allow you to track the whereabouts of a person. That's a lie as well. There were numerous lies told that day, but he has not been indicted for being less than truthful. Robert, do you think that if uh, we go to trial, do you intend to take the stand and actually testify in your own defense? Uh, no decision has been made on that. That would be wildly premature. To a question you could address to my lawyers, but I don't think they could answer it at this time. Roger, the president tweeted out this week that you work for him nowhere near the end of your life. Do you read anything into that until the week? Well, it's technically true. I left the campaign in August of 2015 because I believed I could be a more effective advocate for his election uh, operating on my own, and I did so. I wrote the Clinton's War on Women, which I think is the definitive work on the entire public record of Hillary and Hillary Clinton. Uh, I commend it to you if you haven't read it. Um, but no, I, I don't uh, I don't take any reading of that whatsoever. Is there any change in your relationship that you've had with him over a period of months? Well, I think you have to recognize that based on the advice of both his lawyers and my lawyers, we have not spoken in, uh, in some time. Uh, but I have great affection for the president and his family. Uh, he attended my wedding uh, right in the Willard Hotel next door. Uh, I attended his wedding to Melania, uh, also his wedding to Marla Maples. I've known Melania, the First Lady of the United States, since 1999. She's a wonderful person. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of his agenda. I've also been critical of, I think we should be out of Syria now. I think we should be out of Afghanistan now. I think we should be out of Iraq now. He's, he ran as a non-interventionist. I believe he actually agrees with me, and I hope that he's moving towards that. But his uh, record on the economy, I think, is extraordinary. Things that we were told could not happen, have happened. 500,000 new manufacturing jobs, 4.8 million new jobs, a record stock market, even with the, some of the corrections. Uh, so America is on its way back. I, I have great affection, and I remain a strong and loyal supporter of the president. What do you think he does for good as well? Because he had a good relationship with Michael Cohen at one point, and then the legal thing got complicated, I think. I think my situation is quite different. Do you think that Hillary Clinton should be indicted? Anybody uh, who has not asked a question from the media, Roger, yes, sir. Are you, a, you consider yourself a law and order person, right? I would say, generally speaking, yes. So then do you, do you not think that you, what you describe as process offenses should, should be prosecuted? Are you saying that they should not be prosecuted? Uh, I think process crime has to have intent and materiality. Let's see if that happens. And on the other crimes, let's see if, if they're even actually true. Yes. Roger, I know you've addressed this a little bit in your past media interviews, but there was a reference in the indictment to the notion of somebody being directed. I think you have sort of speculated as to who that might be. In the distance of time, the last five days, do you have any more sense as to what that's a reference to? I have no idea because it's not true. Nobody directed me to do anything or inquire. I did not coordinate anything with the Trump campaign or with WikiLeaks in terms of their disclosures. I had a tip which turned out to be a very good one about the significance and the October timing uh, of the WikiLeaks disclosures. Everything else could be gleaned by setting a Google News alert and reading everything about WikiLeaks and Julia Assange or watching their, their uh, uh, the WikiLeaks Twitter feed when I was not banned on Twitter. Uh, and therefore, my purpose was to hype the disclosures to draw voter and media attention to the ultimate uh, uh, release of material. That's called politics. That's what I do. It hasn't been criminalized in this country, at least not yet. Any more questions from the media? Yes. In that silence, the victim falling, there's the amount of evidence they have to go through. It mentions terabytes of data that they collected. What do you think they're hoping to find in terabytes? I could, I, could, I could not speculate. Uh, I believe that, and I've said this before, I believe that, that over a two-year period, maybe even a two-and-a-half-year period, my emails, my text messages, my phone calls have been monitored. There's certainly nothing new. I have deleted nothing. I have erased nothing. I have over a million emails by my own count. Um, it's a lot to go through. 
Um, I, I cannot afford lawyers to root through every uh, piece of it on an hourly basis. Uh, so uh, just the material that I have, not speaking of discovery now, just the material I have is voluminous. I, I'm just I'm not knowledgeable enough, I'm not knowledgeable enough about the situation to comment. Yes. Just a follow up on an earlier question. Uh, I believe in an interview over the weekend you uh, indicated you believe the senior campaign officials were directed to contact you. Is that what you were specifically? Can you talk about why you think it was the case and what your interaction? Well, and that would be speculation on my part, but I think the two officials referred to would be Steve Bannon, as most of you know. Um, I wrote a column for the Daily Caller. Uh, advocating that the president terminate Mr. Bannon. It was picked up by Drudge, and that makes it a big story. And 24 hours later, Mr. Bannon was fired. So he would have a certain animus towards me. Uh, the exchange of emails that is cited, which had been previously reported in the New York Times, he asked me a question about a public event, and I responded with two pieces of information that were reported by Politico and The Guardian that very morning. So there was no proprietary information there. Uh, uh, Mr. Gates is uh, seeking a reduction in his sentence. I also have no memory of discussing this with him, nor is there any electronic uh, uh, corroboration of that that I'm aware of. Uh, I did not coordinate anything with the Trump campaign pertaining to WikiLeaks. I did, cover, I did follow the story perhaps more closely than anyone else, but Virtually every political journal, journalist in the country wanted to know what it was that Julian Assange had. And many, many of your news organizations have interviewed him. Many others have interviewed him. Uh, contrast this with the, uh, with the operations of the Clinton campaign, money laundering through a law firm to pay for the fabrication of a dossier using Russian assets to do so, but there's no investigation into that. I'm going to limit this to members of the press, if I may. <coughs> All right, I thank you very much for your time. Uh, 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 Owen is going to have a few words of his own. So in closing, what I hope the American people take away from this and what I hope the President Donald Trump takes away from this is that if this can be done to Roger Stone, this can be done to you. If Alex Jones can be silenced, you can be silenced. And why is an innocent man, Roger Stone, being destroyed for allegedly communicating with WikiLeaks that's totally unproven when CNN's Brian Stelter and Anderson Cooper and others have had live interviews with Julian Assange on air? Ask yourself, is that justice? Is that fair? So there is a clear and present danger right now in the United States of America. But it's not Donald Trump. It's not Roger Stone. It's not Alex Jones. It's not conservatives. It's a rogue special counsel that is destroying innocent people's lives. It's a Democrat party that fights for open borders and no voter ID laws and celebrates infanticide. That is a threat to this country. When you're celebrating infanticide and celebrating innocent men being destroyed, you are the problem with this country. So I hope that the president understands how serious this threat is and they will come after the president and remove a duly elected president if they can do it. And if the American people allow them to do it, then this country is dead. Thank you guys for coming here today. I hope that you will all report the truth. All right, everyone who is with the media, you need to clear out the room right now, break down as quickly as possible. Thank you. Yeah. Well, There's going to be no bird dogging at all. Bird dogging? Bird dogging. I'm a bird shirt.